So you're about to buy stick insects or have bought stick insects and you're trying to decide the correct way to house them. Well, this is the video for you. Welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So welcome to part two of the beginner's guide to stick insects. The first part being, are they the right pet for you? If you haven't checked that one out, make sure to do so. But today's video is all about housing. And this is one of the most vital, vital things when it comes to keeping. Obviously, right? Now there are various ways you can keep stick insects. Let's just look at a few before we set one up. This here is a converted old fish tank. I keep my assassin bugs in it, so you can actually convert a fish tank for your stick insects. I don't know why I keep showing you assassin bug enclosures, but again, an enclosure like this, a critter keeper, you can also keep your stick insects, but you must be wary of the ventilation holes. Small nymphs can get out of those. You can keep them in sweet jars or nice acrylic enclosures. And everyone can get hold of these, right? Storage tubs, your cheapest and easiest solution to keeping stick insects. But today, I'm going to show you how to house stick insects correctly inside an Exoterra. So as you can see under Kimura Bee, this is my filming area for anyone that's new, I have some Exoterras and the middle one sticking out is the one we're gonna work on today. Now I'm gonna actually show you three methods of housing, but first let me discuss why I chose the Exoterra for this video. Now there are two major things and one golden rule you must bear in mind when housing stick insects. The golden rule I'll say in almost every video because it is vital, and that is housing must be at least three times the height of your stick insect's current size at all times. So if you keep them in a smaller container, you'll have to keep upgrading. Now this is a 45 centimeter tall Exoterra, which will do any stick insect that can grow up to 15 centimeters or less. But bigger is always better when it comes to stick insects. So even if I have five centimeter stickies in here, they'll still thrive well. So we've discussed the golden rule. What are the two other key aspects? Number one, I like Exoterras because they have a vented top. You see, this one was a second hand one and I've had to make a glue layer along here. It doesn't matter how shabby it is. They have got mesh they can cling on to, which is really, really important. You always want a mesh top. So if you're using a storage box enclosure, glue some mesh to the top of your storage box. Same with sweet jars and so on and so forth. I've had success even using underskirt netting that I've bought super, super cheap, rather than metal mesh. Although metal mesh isn't that expensive either. And if you want something that will last, metal is your best. So that is one key thing. The other key thing when housing is what goes on the floor. And this is going to be the major point of today's video. So, opening this up, you can see at the moment we've just got a plain glass bottom. Now for some species that's not really a problem, but it will be a problem for you, especially if it comes to collecting over. They get stuck right on the edges in the corner, and sometimes you crush them when you're trying to get them out. So what I'm going to talk about today are three different methods of flooring for your stick insects. So method number one, the simplest solution but only suitable for a handful of species is this. Ta-da! What is this magical white thing on the floor? Well guys, it's kitchen roll. Plain and simple kitchen roll. Now you will notice, and I'm not trying to diss here, but you'll notice certain companies will sell stick and set liners to go on the floor. Talking about ease of cleaning out and collecting over Rubbish, absolute tripe in my opinion. It's a marketing scheme, right? There is no difference to you using some paper towel than a liner. The liners are disposable so that you keep buying more. You're wasting your money. Kitchen towel has been used by even experts across the field. There is nothing wrong with it, providing your stick insects will either flick eggs or drop eggs. If they're barriers and they need to bury their over, they won't be able to do so on kitchen towel. So, just for an example's sake, we're going to talk about the Cimarosis, the Indian stick insect, your most common stick insect ever. This kind of bottom is absolutely fine for that stick insect. They can live in a variety of different enclosures and different habitats. It's very easy because you just, as I said before, pick it up to take it out. So it's a bit wet underneath. 
but you see what I mean, you just take it out. You can then collect up the over, sift away the poo, sift away the over to one side, bada bing, bada boom, you're done. Easy as pie. The issue you're gonna have with a paper towel bottom is not only that certain stick insects need substrate to lay, but it's also not great for humid species. Certain species require it damp all the time and you'll find that this will just get too wet and when you try and rip it out, it's gonna fall to pieces and cause you a problem. So it's better for drier kept species. For example, Extatosoma tiaratum, your Maclay spectre stick insects will do absolutely fine on a paper towel bottom. So now you've got your tank, you're making up your mind whether you want to use the paper towel bottom, still a little confused. So this is why we move to method number two. Okay, method number two looks just like... Ta-da! What's changed? Nothing's changed because the same bottom is still used. But Sam, you said sometimes they need to borrow. Sometimes they need a bit more humidity. What's going on? I'll show you. The difference with this method is either this or this. What am I talking about? Let me explain. So what we have here is one tub of soil and one tub of sand. You won't need both guys, it's pick or choose, whichever suits you best. So stick insects that need to bury their eggs will happily do so either in substrate like soil or sand. They're perfectly happy to use either. Sand is the preferred choice among keepers and the reason being is you can simply pour this into a sieve every week and the sand will disappear and it will leave behind a bit of poo and all your stick insect eggs, making it super easy to collect up those eggs. Why soil then? Why would we choose this option? Well, if you've got a semi-humid species that doesn't need constant dampness, but does like a bit of a humid environment in the enclosure, a little bit of humidity in the air and somewhere to, to lay on that's a little bit more moist, soil holds your humidity better, okay? What I recommend though, if you use the soil method, is each week, pop this one out and pop a fresh one straight back in because that will give you a full week then to rummage through the original pot you used and take out the over then you swap that pot back over for the next week a full week to be able to collect up that stick insects over is way better than having to rush it right okay so now you've got two top notch methods the only thing to bear in mind is to make sure these tubs are deep enough compared to the size of the stick insect some with larger overpositors on their abdomen will need a deeper substrate, a deeper pot of sand or a deeper pot of mud to be able to push that over in and bury it for them to be happy. But for a smaller species, that sand pot size would do perfectly. So now we've discussed two methods here. What is the third and final method for flooring a stick insect enclosure? I'll show you now. And here we have it. You probably guessed this already, right? A full substrate bottom. Now, using full substrate bottom is perfect for humid kept species and ground dwelling species. You'll find a lot of the more ground dwelling style species tend to come from Southeast Asian countries where it's a lot more humid and it's wetter on the ground. You never want the substrate so wet that when you squeeze it, it drips out, but you want it wet enough that it looks sort of like fresh compost. Now, if you want a naturalistic setup, of course you can still use soil for dry species too. Just don't moisten it down. Now the species that are going to be living in here are in fact Haniella dahani. Now I do have to do some additional touches to this to make it suitable for them and have the substrate a bit deeper. But that's something we're gonna discuss on a more intermediate level in a future video. We're still keeping it to basics here. So the last thing you'll need is a pot to pop in your food plant. Now this is an old pot with a bit of stagnant water which I will be cleaning out before I officially use it but I'm only showing it as an example here today. You must always make sure that your water is fresh and clean and you clean out your pots too before you add in your food plant. But that's it, bada bing bada boom, your three tips. You just have to figure out which is best for you. So a super quick recap ladies and gentlemen, you should have a mesh top at all times. Some do molt from branches, but they tend to pick the highest point possible. So having a mesh top is almost a necessity when keeping stick insects. You have the enclosure at least three times the height 
of your stick insect at all times or more. You have a pot of fresh water to hold your food plants in to stop them going dry and dying out quickly. And you need to decide what flooring you want. Do you want paper towel? Do they need to bury so you could have paper towel with tubs? Or do you want to go for a full naturalistic and possibly more humid effect by having a full substrate bottom? One thing I did not add about having a substrate bottom though, ladies and gentlemen, is it's near impossible to collect up your over. A little easier on the drier side, but in the moister conditions like this, it is difficult. So what do I do with species that bury their over, that have a naturalistic style like this? I simply leave it. I leave the eggs to develop and incubate within the home. If I did plan on selling any, I'd have a quick rummage. But yes, this is the most ideal situation for leaving stick insects to hatch. Now, I have found in my experience that having stick insects that bury their ova, the success rate is always much higher if just left in the enclosure. Now, for those of you that might have a bit of a grump on because I haven't shown you the Haniella dahani that I'm putting in there, well, as I said previously, I need to make adjustments to their tank and that species will come up in a more intermediate video because in my personal opinion, they are not best suited for beginners. Now, I already have a plan in mind on how these videos are gonna progress, but please comment me below. Let me know if they're useful. Let me know if these tutorials are helping you. Please share them amongst communities so that you can help other beginners and comment me below what sort of videos you are hoping to see to do with the Beginner's Guide to Stick Insect. Do you have any questions that maybe I could make a full video out of or just answer for you in a future video? But as it stands, folks, that's going to be it from me today. I need to go finish their tank and get them in safely. So if you want to see what else dwells within the realm, we keep a variety of things here. Tarantulas, scorpions, praying mantis, beetles, so on and so forth. So if you want to see more, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. That's going to be it from me. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. This channel strongly supports my bug book the one-stop place for all exotic keepers, a social media platform and more. Make sure to check it out in the link in my description below.